this is a very exciting video in the measure theory reproduction list because we're finally going to define Lebesgue integration. Now, Lebesgue integration doesn't mean that we're integrating with respect to the Lebesgue measure. It just means that we're going to integrate with respect to any general measure. Before we start, let me remind you that if you like this kind of videos, then you can donate a small amount on Ko-fi, or you can also become a member on Ko-fi to get access to exclusive content such as the boards in the videos so that you can download. If in addition to that content you want to get some merchandise, then you can follow us on Patreon, where you can get hoodies, mugs, t-shirts and many more things. But if all you want is the merchandise, then you can just purchase it individually in our store. Now let's start with the video. We want to integrate measurable functions. So let's say that we are on a measurable space x, m, so m is the sigma algebra. We will use the notation L plus to say the functions that go from our set onto zero infinity because, remember, we're first going to attempt integrating non-negative functions so that then we can generalize it for any measurable function. So, f is a non-negative function that's measurable. But now, before defining the integration over non-negative functions, let's first go through simple functions. The reason for this is Simple functions are simple to work with, and we know from what we saw in our previous video that any measurable function can be approximated by simple functions. So maybe we can just define integration over simple functions and then just approximate measurable functions. So let's say that we have a function phi defined as the sum from n equals 1 up to some capital N of a n and then the characteristic function on some sets e n. So we have a n going to be just real numbers and the sets e n are all going to be measurable sets. So all these functions, so this function is measurable and we will define the integral of phi with respect to mu plus the notation that we will use for this is the usual one, such as the integral of phi d mu. We define this as the sum from n equals 1 up to capital N of a n times mu of en. So we are basically doing what we're used to doing when integrating. Let's see why. Let's say that these are our sets e1, e2, and e3. They could be way more, but let's just say that capital N is 3, and our function phi can be like this, this is a1, this is a2, and this number here, a3. So this is our function phi. Well, what we're doing is saying, well, what's the size of this set? Well, the size of e1 is mu of e1. So we calculate this length, and then we just multiply it by the length of the height of this rectangle. And then we do the same for this one. Well, what's the size of this rectangle? Well, it's going to be the measure of the base times the height, and the height is, in this case, a2. And the same for this last one. We calculate the measure of the base of the rectangle mu of e3, and then multiply it by the height, that is, a3. And we add these three areas, and that's what this sum is giving us. It's just the height of the rectangle times 
the length of the base. But now, this may seem logical when we're working with real numbers, but remember that these spaces in which we are working with, they can be just anything, because we're working with an abstract set x, an abstract sigma algebra, and an abstract measure. But well, even if we can't picture that, we know that when we integrate with respect to Lebesgue, all we're doing is using the usual definition of integral, only that we have a few differences in how we measure this length of the base. So great, now integrating simple functions is very easy and it's basically what we used to do with integrating just any function. But now, how do we generalize this definition for any abstract function f that's measurable? Now we have some of the basic properties of integral that are very easy to prove and those are well, if I'm integrating a constant times a function phi, then this is going to be the same as just pulling the constant out of the integral and integrating phi. Because basically, multiplying this constant will affect these coefficients a n. And because this constant c doesn't depend on the index n, we can just take it out of the sum and we have then the new definition. So that one is easy. Also, the integral of the sum of two simple functions is the sum of the integrals. Again, this is very simple because it's just a sum, a finite sum, so we can split this finite sum into two parts. So, very easy. Now, we have to find the integral for simple functions. How can we generalize this for any measurable function in our space? So now, if we have a function f in L+, plus, remember L plus is the set of non-negative measurable functions in the space, then define the integral of f with respect to the measure mu as the supremum over all the phi's that are simple and smaller than f so we will approximate f from below by simple functions of the integral of phi that means that if for function f is something like this, then we will approximate f with simple functions. This doesn't look very good, but we just approximate for this phi, we calculate the integral, and we have a number. And then we look at another way of approximating this. In this case, the green one is a bit worse. Let's say phi so we integrate phi and we have another number and we continue doing this for every simple function that's smaller than or equal to f and we just take the supremum of all these intervals, all these numbers well that's the way we define integration with respect to some abstract measure of a function and you might say well this is very difficult and it is if I give you a particular measure and a particular measurable function, it's very difficult to calculate this because you have to find a way to obtain the supremum of infinitely many numbers. And these numbers can be very different depending on what my simple functions are. So yes, calculating integrals with respect to abstract measures is very difficult and it's usually avoided. What's usually done instead is determining if this integral of just any measurable function with respect to a measure is finite or infinite. But we will talk about that later. To do that, we will have several conversions theorems. So we will work with sequences of functions and what happens when we integrate the sequence. Thus, the integral of the limit equals the 
limit of the integral? Well, we will work on that kind of theorems in the next few videos.